this reaction has an activation energy of 1.000 times 10 squared kilojoules per mole and a rate constant of 0.286 meters per mole seconds at 500 K. What's the rate constant at 490 K? All right, so uh, let's try to attack this problem on paper. Should there be a negative sign here? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I didn't see that. You guys all got off to a good start. Um, which equation should we use here? Well, again, there's two different situations. So maybe we should use this equation because this equation has two different situations in it. And again, you need to label situation two and situation one. So I would say the 490 is situation two, and the original, this other information is situation one. Now, what should I plug in here for this activation energy? Now, this is 10 to the squared kilojoules. But remember that the R value you're going to use is in joules. If you look at your inside front cover, that R value is in joules. Some of you, I think, noticed that, so that was good, but um, maybe some of you didn't. OK, so you've got to watch out, because moving back and forth between joules and kilojoules is a very common trap in these chemistry problems. All right, so you can start by writing this as kilojoules, but eventually you've got to translate this into joules. Um, so uh, how, what conversion would we do to change this into joules? by 1,000 joules and one kilojoule, this is like 10 to the third. So this will become 10 to the fifth. And this is really just one. So this just becomes 10 to the fifth joules. So I'll just write that like this. This will be negative 10 to the fifth joules. All right, so this would be 10 to the fifth uh, joules per mole.
before I forget, there's one trap they didn't use here, but that they could have. What units do we need to use for the temperatures? Kelvin. Yeah, you can't use Celsius. But it's a very common trap to give you Celsius and see if you're going to use Kelvins. Um, so you watch out for that on the test. Here they gave us Kelvins, but a lot of the time the instructors like to use Celsius, and you have to know how to convert that into Kelvin. So you must use Kelvin here in this uh, equation. This is why I've gotten so far on the right-hand side. What can we do to simplify the left-hand side? Yeah, that's a good idea. We can use the logarithm rules we learned about before. The log of a quotient is the difference of the logs. Okay, well, this is what I've gotten so far. I haven't made any other mistakes. Now, what do I do to solve for k2? Yeah. Now, again, we use the work we did earlier. We talked about how we can get rid of natural logs by rewriting things like this. So there's, pro there's probably some rounding error going on here. I'll double check that in a second. So the book says it's 0.175. So it looks like you guys got it right and I got it wrong. made a mistake somewhere along the way. So this is what you got, 0.175? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, well, I won't bother to see what I, what I made my mistake. So um, let's see, where were we? So what would be the units on this? Because it's the same reaction, so it has to have the same units as before. 
as you learned earlier, rate constants can have different, different rate constants, different reactions can have different units on the rate constant. You learn how to figure out the units, but if it's the same reaction, they have to be the same units. Uh, if we're going to be dividing these, they have to have the same units. 